Hello, and welcome to the Game Dev Outpost. In this video, we'll be talking about visual shaders, subsurface scattering, and transmission in Godot 3. Now the thing is, a lot of people misunderstand subsurface scattering for transmission. And transmission is a lot like emissive, but when something's emissive, it pretends like it is a light, or it is a light. So it's emanating light. And when something's transmissive, it's receiving light, and the light's bouncing around and coming back out of the object, or even through the object, where you can see light on the shadow side. Transmission is a property that's on basically everything, but it's most noticeable in things like grapes or any kind of fruit. And one of the most memorable ones is if you take a light and put it on the back side of your hand, if you look at the outer edges of your fingers, you'll see that they glow. And then as they're glowing from the other side, you can see a shadow being cast from your bones or from the veins in your hand. That's transmission or sometimes it's also known as semi-transparent. Now subsurface scattering, that has to do with the density of a transmissive object. When an object is a little more dense and transmissive, the light isn't gonna come through as well, and the light's gonna be out of focus. If the object is more dense, light's gonna come into it, and it's gonna bounce around more, and more of those light scatters are gonna be absorbed. So in Godot, before you can even get subsurface scattering or transmission to work, you have to have light coming in. Now the transmission, you can use a scalar constant, or you can use a color constant, or you can also use textures. But you do have the full range of RGB available. So if we plug a color in, what you'll notice is, as we go higher towards white, this is going to increase the intensity. And you'll see in this situation that the light is pouring through, and you see that the other side has now turned white. Now for me, instead of just using a color, I like to use a multiply with a scalar constant. So this way, I can just adjust the intensity by itself, and then I can also change the color. Now another thing you should notice with transmission is that shadows should be casting through the object. It's kind of like the example with your hand, where if you shine a light on it, you'll see bones and you'll see veins casting shadow. Now the subsurface scattering effect is definitely dependent on the view of the camera. It's mainly looking for any data type, something like a scalar or something like a black and white texture. So we're gonna plug this scalar in, and right now, as I move the camera, you're gonna see that there's no effect. But if I turn this up to something like 20, and then I move the camera, as we look past the surface, there are some artifacts, but you see that certain areas are getting softer as we move the camera. Now with that said, subsurface scattering can end up being very costly. So there are some quality settings. We go to project, project settings, and you wanna scroll down until you get to rendering and quality. And you'll see subsurface scattering. And here there'll be quality, scale, follow surface, and weight samples. And each one of these you can preview without restarting the engine. I'll leave you to play with these settings. Overall, they're just quality settings. And with all quality settings, if you increase them, they'll be more costly. All right guys, there's a little bit more to talk about with subsurface scattering and transmission, but this should cover the basics of transmission and subsurface scattering in Godot 3. If you thought this video was useful and it helped, please let me know by commenting down below and liking the video. Thanks guys.